Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential problem. And make sure to stick at the end of the problem, where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x is equal to 1. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out 4 to the power of x from my left hand side. So now I have 4 to the power of x times 4 to the power of x divided by 4 to the power of x is 1. So I have 4 to the power of x times 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Now this is equal to 1. Now if I simplify what's in the parentheses, I get 4. So now I have 4 to the power of x times 4 is equal to 1. Now from here, I actually have two methods to solving this problem. So for method number 1, First start with 4 to the power of x times 4 is equal to 1. Now, I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with 4 to the power of x is equal to 1 over 4. Now, if I have something in the form 1 over a to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of negative n. So in this case, 1 over 4 we can rewrite as 1 over 4 to the power of 1. And now, this is the same thing as 4 to the power of negative 1. So now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, then this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, I have 4 to the power of x is equal to 4 to the power of negative 1. And because these two bases are the same, the exponents are the same as well, meaning x is equal to negative 1. Now, for method 2 of solving this problem, original equation was 4 to the power of x times 4 is equal to 1. Now, instead of dividing by 4 on both sides, I'm actually going to multiply 4 with 4 to the power of x. Well, first of all, 4 we can rewrite as 4 to the power of 1. And now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So in this case, 4 to the power of x times 4 to the power of 1, this can equal 4 to the power of x plus 1. Now, 1 here, we can rewrite as 4 to the power of 0, because anything to the power of 0 is 1. And now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n, so in this case, x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now to solve this, all I have to do is subtract by 1 on both sides, and I get x is equal to negative 1. Now to check, my original equation was 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x is equal to 1. Now we know that x is equal to negative 1, so if I plug that in, I get 4 to the power of negative 1. 4 to the power of negative 1 plus 4 to the power of negative 1 plus 4 to the power of negative 1 is equal to 1. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of negative n, this is equal to 1 over a to the power of n. So 4 to the power of negative 1, that's going to equal 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 is equal to 1. Now, if I factor out 1 over 4 from this, I get 1 over 4 times, well, 1 over 4 divided by 1 over 4 is 1, so I have 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 1. Now if I simplify this in the parentheses, I get 1 over 4 times 4 is equal to 1. So then these two will cancel out, and I'll be left with 1 is equal to 1. And because this is right, our solution is right. All right, so I have 2 to the power of x is equal to 0. Now, the first thing I'm going to do to solve this is I'm going to take the log on both sides because we're trying to find the value of x here. So if I take my uh, log on both sides, I get log 2 to the power of x is equal to log of 0. Now, if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can actually move this exponent b to the front, so this would equal b times log a. 
And the reason why this property is so important is because, let's say I have the equation 7 to the power of x is equal to 9. Well, right now, as you can see, x here, this is an exponent. And it's actually really hard to solve for an exponent, especially when the exponent is going to be a decimal. Because right here, 7 is not a whole, x is not a whole number, because we know that 7 to the power of 1 is 7, and 7 to the power of 2, this is 49. So we know that the value of x is going to be somewhere between 1 and 2. And now to find the value of x, if I use this property, and if I take the log on both sides, I get log 7 to the power of x is equal to log 9. Now, because of this, I can move x to the front. So I get x times log 7 is equal to log 9. And now that x is a real term, it's much simpler to solve for x. All I have to do is divide by log 7 on both sides. And now I get the value of x is log 9 over log 7. So that's why this property is really useful. So now for log 2 to the power of x, I'm going to be using this property and I'm going to move x to the front. So now I have x times log 2 is equal to log 0. Now, if we want to solve for x, all I have to do is divide both sides by log 2. These two cancel out, and I get x is equal to log 0 over log 2. Now, this is log 0, the value of that is actually undefined, and the value of log 2, this is 0 0.301. Well, because one value is undefined and you can't divide an undefined value with another number, this means that the value of x is actually undefined, meaning it has no solution. So x is undefined, so this equation has no solution. All right, so I 5 to the power of x is equal to 50. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log on both sides. So now I have log 5 to the power of x is equal to log 50. Now an important property of logarithms is that if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can actually move this exponent b to the front of the logarithm. So this would equal b times log a. So now log 5 to the power of x, I can move the exponent x to the front. So now I get x times log 5 is equal to log 50. Now, I'm going to divide both sides by log 5. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x is equal to log 50 over log 5. Now log 50 this is the same thing as log 10 times 5. Now I have this over log 5. And now if I have something in the form log a times b, this is actually equal to log a plus log b. So this is actually how you add logarithms. You simply just multiply the two bases. So in this in the case of log 10 times 5, that's going to equal log 10 plus log 5. Log 10 is actually equal to 1. So now I have 1 plus log 5 over log 5. Now log 5, that's actually equal to 0 0.699. So now I have x is equal to 1 plus 0 0.699 over 0 0.699. Now 1 plus 0 0.699, that's actually equal to 1.699. So now I have 1.699 over 0 0.699. And if you actually end up dividing these two using a calculator, you get that x is equal to 2.43.
So that is our answer.